and welcome to Dinesh Guarda YouTube podcast show powered by businessabc.org, former openbusinesscouncil.org and citiesabc.com. We continue profiling global leaders and professionals that are bringing new ways of looking at technology and business and especially bringing new narratives. And I think the narrative is very important, especially with everything that happens with, with business and technology with the complexity of things around data, artificial intelligence becoming, I would say, more exciting and more complex and more challenging. And I think we at the moment are in a fantastic crossroad where we're going to have a lot of breakthroughs, but we should not forget the basics. And I think one of the things I'm learning as I get more into data, AI and technology is that in the end of the day is what problems you're solving and how we can actually create relationships with leaders that actually can help us saving or bringing new roads and roadmaps for us. So that's the case of my special guest for today podcast show. So I'm uh, quite excited to bring to the series Shakar Daniel. Shakar Daniel is a prominent figure in the technology industry, known for his role and CEO and co-founder of Alaron Technologies based out of Israel. Shakar, with a career marked by leadership and innovation, has been pushing boundaries between business strategy and operational excellence, but as well bringing together the areas of technology around data and web. Born and raised in Israel, Shakar pursued his education in industrial engineering, earning a bachelor in science degree from the Olin Institute of Technology. He later continued his academic journey, obtaining his executive MBA from the Hebrew University. In this work and academic, he blend the technical expertise and business acumen and lay the foundation for his future work and then behaviors. As Shakarin's career trajectory has been working in different senior roles and industry leadership, and especially working on projects that have been trying to touch the areas of digital, web, data, and how to put together all these different things. So Alaron Technologies is the company that is leading, and we're going to talk about that. And it's a company focused on providing innovative solutions for data collection and analysis. This company, of course, is bridging a lot of different things, especially in the way you bridge the data, the web collection, and a lot of things that touches as well, increasing artificial intelligence. And uh, as a CEO and founder, Sakar has been instrumental in shaping the company's vision and strategy and driving its growth and expansion into global markets. And there is leadership. The company has developed cutting edge technology, including NetNut, an hybrid proxy network that enables anonymous data collection from public sources from the web. And Sashar's commitment to the excellence and customer satisfaction has earned him recognition in the leadership around technology sector, and as well in pushing the company and the different areas and products around the company and its ecosystem. So welcome to our series, Shekhar. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, so you are from a, a country that is known around technology. And of course, I would say that it's probably one of the most innovative countries in data and technology in the planet, if not probably the top five or top even more than that. So tell us a bit about uh, your journey into creating uh, your company and being the professional you are today, starting a bit by your education and your professional career. Okay. Thank you very much. So. <laughs> My personal journey started as an industrial engineer in Elbit Systems as a project manager, program manager, managing complex products in the space of uh, Homeland Security and the security. Elbit Systems is the leading company in Israel providing security products and technologies globally all over the world. You know, Israel also known for its security products and we need to defend ourselves. So. We have, we have the best companies here in Israel. Then I uh, go on with my journey to another company called Logic. Again, as a program manager, manage project managers. We did uh, the UAE, a huge uh, Homeland Security project, multidisciplinary, including everything, technology, infrastructures, etc. Then I moved to PrimeSense, again, to be a, a kind of program manager, meaning to be the point of contact between customers, R&D, sales and marketing, to manage again multidisciplinary projects in PrimeSense. PrimeSense was a huge success story, one of the best startups in Israel then, and they've been acquired by Apple. 
in 2013, we developed the uh, 3D technology, basically that the, the iPhones today are based, the, the face recognition technology is based on our technology from PrimeSense. And then I moved to Alarum and uh, started Alarum uh, with uh, uh, two other, a few other founders. The journey in Alarum is something that we can have a dedicated pod podcast to discuss only about this crazy journey. And I think we can write a great book on this journey because it's, 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 it's a kind of a mountain train of years. Uh, so we started basically as a cybersecurity company uh, in Israel based on a private uh, investment and uh, selling, developing and selling products in the, in the area of cybersecurity in the layer of uh, data security, secure vaults, secure emails. We started to engage with a lot of customers, AAA customers, banks, insurance companies, investment houses, government offices, Israeli defense forces, the intelligence unit of the Israeli army, Israeli police, etc., etc. But back then, uh, already, I think in 2018, uh, I started, me and my partners started uh, to understand that the cybersecurity space become more and more crowded. It's a huge red ocean full of, full of companies from 10 people, from, from young startups to giants and the, you, you know, the giants of the world, like the, 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 the Palo Alto, the checkpoint, the crowd strike, etc. And due to this, and uh, some trends are becoming to be very significant. One of them it's become very costly and from HR perspective, you need to invest a lot of money. Basically you need to lose a lot of money till you start to see significant revenues and to be profitable is something that is fantasy in this space. It takes years, if at all. Second, the competition is, is, is so challenging that the probability to win a good contract with a high quality customer is become almost mission impossible. And third, the giants, if back then each giant has his own layer or, 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 or vertical in the cyberspace, the giants started to understand that they have the power because anyway, they are in most of the organizations. So kind of become all in one. And, you know, a, a firewall company can be also endpoint protection and can be this and can be that. So it's not just that you are competing with other players in, in your layer. You are starting to compete with all the giants of the world, which made, made the mission to be more and more impossible. So, uh, uh, and, and in parallel, by the way, with something that is very important, we started our journey at the, at the public markets. And the public market is not, cannot accept, it doesn't know, by the way, how to uh, deal with young startups that are not profitable, small revenues, and the journey to profitability is something that you cannot project even. And due to this, when you need to raise money, not like in the private market, which is a good sign for a company if she can raise money, in the public market, when you are small and not profitable, when you are raising money and basically you dilute, you dilute your, your shareholders because th that's the nature of raising money. Uh, and it's terrible for the market cap, for the share, for the share price. And it's starting to be, it, it, it becomes a very negative trend. So due to all of this in 2018, uh, we took a decision that we want to leverage the fact that we're a public company. And one of the main advantages of being a public company is the fact that you can do, you, 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 you can do M and A's. It's much more easy to do M and A's because you have shares, you can exchange shares. You have shares that are not, uh, basically shares that are trading. And we started to think and to strategize how we are going to extend our product portfolio in order to mitigate the risk of the cyberspace that becomes so crowded and challenging and basically to start our way out of the classic, the traditional cyber 
to a space that is less crowded, that has a promised future, and that we can bring our capabilities, skills, and knowledge to this space together with the company and the talents that we will acquire and to build something interesting that, that, that will replace the cyber and, and once it will go well. So that's what we did. We acquired NetNut, uh, which was a very young group of talents, data company, IP proxy network company, but data company in the, the space of data collection. And we acquired them back then in 2019. And when they were started, just, you know, a little bit more than $1 million in uh, revenues, we invested a lot of money in this company because we wanted really to go directly to be one of the leaders in this space. We thought that we have the chance to lead this space. How many companies, small companies, and even, even the fantasy to lead, to lead a space, you know, the, the technology uh, uh, ecosystem, it, 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 it is not something that you can say, okay, I will need the space in, in, in few years. You can start, try to be a significant player, but here we thought, we recognized that we can lead the space. So we invested in the infrastructure of in expanding the network in the technology. And uh, I'm happy to, uh, and, and, you know, those that are following us see that NetNut uh, today is one of the leaders in the data collection space. We are generating more than, we are, we are in a run rate of more than $30 million revenues in a year. We are profitable, even very profitable. In this journey over the time, as, as I mentioned before, after we saw and we we understood that we have a superstar in our hands, which is NetNet business. Basically, we spin out, we sold our cybersecurity business. We scaled down other business lines that were not so profitable and still were costly. And basically today, Allahum is the model company, but our business is NetNut. So it's, it's, it's the same company. Allahum and NetNut are the same companies. We are experts in the experts in data collection and B2B, business to business, growing and the, the, the future look promising. Now that's an impressive trajectory. So, so let me ask a couple of questions on this. So first of all, you were an that company, which is a very important thing. That, it, that I would like to tell you. So tell us the journey to become a Nasdaq company and as well from Israel to New York and Nasdaq and now as a global powerhouse, like you said, with strong revenues. And then I want to go to the technology, but I want to go first to the constitution of the company. And I think it's important for people listening to us as well. Yes. So as mentioned in, in, in the previous uh, question, we started our journey in the, in the capital markets as a very small, as, as a startup company basically a startup company that instead of raising money in the private market is raising money and progressing in the capital markets, in the public markets. We started in the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange in 2016. And then in 2018, we jumped the class. We uplisted the company in the NASDAQ. And since then, we are a, a dual company trading both here and there in the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange and in the NASDAQ in, in the main list. Okay, so I've I've many uh, 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 you know many conclusions, many thoughts. You know the world of the to being a public company in in a young age is is, is, is so many upsides, but so many downsides. And uh, you know entrepreneurs or CEOs that uh, wants to take their company to be a public uh, company, I think they need to consider it uh, deeply because. The upsides of being a public company when you are young back then with very small revenues, not profitable, is that you can raise money easier than in the private market because you have shares, the shares worth something. It's not one or zero, like in the private market, you have a shares, they have value. So you can raise money uh, in, in easier than in the public, in the private sector. Second, you need to organize, you need to be very organized which might be a burden, but basically it makes you to be more professional because you need to have the financials some time. You need to work according to standards. You need to be, to be very transparent, very transparent, sorry. So basically it helps you to organize, to get the company, to be faster, more mature. From the other side, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the, the public sector is less, let's say, 
less or, or, or not less i will mention it in a different way the public sector is basically in its nature is for mature companies mature companies even if you're profitable or not it's it's a way of strategy but you need to be more mature than than the public markets the analysts know how to project your revenues where it is your direction etc etc when you are so young and basically, you don't know even what is going to be your next uh, quarter revenues or your next year revenues. So the public, the public uh, market is not so patient about this uh, patience about these uh, companies. And then when you need to raise money, uh, basically you are raising money, which sometimes can be let's call it a bad money. Bad money. I mean, you know, it's the same money, but the terms of the deal basically in their nature can take your share down and down and down and your market cap down and down and, and basically it has an impact on the motivation on the energy on the motivation of the employees because it's transparent everyone can open every day the internet and see what is your market cap what did you do yesterday how is your financials you're totally transparent so it's tough you need to be tough guy in order to lead the companies a young company or micro cap, we call it micro cap or nano cap companies in the stock exchange. Uh, sometimes it can be something that will, let's say, you are less robust, less agile. You cannot take fast decisions because everything needs to be transparent and everything has an impact on your shareholders. And you don't know who are your shareholders because it's the public market. It's not like in the private sector that you can call your shareholders for, 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 for the meeting room and discuss, let's change strategy. Let's let's decrease uh, uh, expenses and maybe let's start a new a, a, a new product and then it will postpone the revenues. But it's still the best way to go in the public market. Sometimes you need to take decisions according to the image of of the of your company with your shareholders, which sometimes might make you take wrong decisions or wrong business decisions. So it's it's a it's a it's a it's a tough journey, very challenging, and, and ex it, it, you know it's it's exciting journey because you are a public company, but and you need to think well. What is the best time for your company? What is what is your vision? If if you think that it's the right time to come to the public markets, because if you will come prepared and educated with experience in the public markets then you can make your life easier. If you come very young, you are not experienced, the management is not experienced in leading a public company, it, it, it might be very challenging and might damage your business, basically. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different way. And I think in a world that we have, like you said, the, the major global corporations, then the, the, the medium-sized companies, and then you have as well right now a lot of innovation, but as well a lot of disruption around the startups, crypto, projects and a lot of different things yes. in blockchain yeah. so it, it's a it's a kind of a moving target game so i want to touch right now so very important thing so you guys are doing quite a lot of technology and a lot of products so you provide so i would like to touch this because it's quite important so as a global provider of internet access and web data collection solutions your solution is based on the world fastest and most advanced and secure hybrid proxy network they enable companies and, and big data companies to collect data anonymously at any scale from the public source over the internet. So I would like for you to elaborate on this for people that are more careful. I think my audience is quite digital savvy, but still, I think especially if you could explain how it works with this model. And we had, of course, in this podcast, uh, uh, similar companies and civil from big ones to small ones that we have been having people from IBM and different parts. But what you guys are doing is critical. And I think this work is becoming even more critical with all the iterations of generative AI. But let's start first how you guys work and as well your products. Let's start from the fact everybody understand, I guess, that data is the lifeblood of everything today. You, you, everything you are doing is according to data. Imagine that 30 years ago, the internet would not exist. So you took many decisions in your, in your life not according to data analysis. And also in our private life, when we want to, to buy something, where we want to go to a vacation, we are going to the biggest or the only data source in the world, which is the internet. In the internet, you can find everything. 
So data is the lifeblood of everything. It's the lifeblood of organizations. Each organization, every, sorry, every CEO, in order to get the right business decisions, he needs to know everything about his neighborhood, the ecosystem, the competition, the trends in the world, the trends according to geographics, uh, the trend of the buyers, uh, the, 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 the legal, the regulation. Everything is according to data. So in order to collect data and to, to have the right data, the focus data in your hands, you cannot do it manually, not, not as a personnel, as a, as a company. You cannot do it manually because the, the internet is an ocean of data and sometimes, not, not, it's not sometimes, most of the time, not all the data is accurate, transparent. So basically as a CEO, let's take an example, as a CEO of a company that needs to take a business decision, he needs to have all the data in front of them after the data has been analyzed and there are conclusions. So from the data, you can see what are the conclusions. So in order to get it on a permanent basis, Basically, it's all around on the automation and tools and products that will allow everyone to collect data and to get a transparent data, real data, accurate data, and data in scale. One more important, important comment, not like the physical world, but the internet or the websites can change their image or their present presentation, basically, according to demographic attributes. Because let's, let's, uh, Dennis, you are in London, I'm in Tel Aviv. If, if I will come to London and we will go to uh, the, the, the same store, we will see the same products. We will see the same prices because it's the physical world. But imagine yourself that I will come to this store with you, but someone would say, oh, this guy is not from London, he's from Tel Aviv. So I will present him different products or different prices because his flavor is different. So this is the internet. You can tell you, you uh, websites are in, increasingly change their image according to demographic attributes that basically coming from your IP address. IP is your identity card. So from one side, it's very positive because I want to see something that is interesting for me and you want to see something that is interesting for you. But if you are a company and you need to collect data in scale, not to be blocked by your competitors, you're not to be misleaded on purpose by your competitors, because imagine yourself that if I am a grocery shop and I went to an online store and I want to see the prices in your online store, and you know that it's me, you will change the process, change the product, you will mislead me on purpose. So in order to get transparent and accurate data and in scale and not to be blocked and basically to be part of the automation set of products, you cannot use your own IP, your own office. You need to have product that knows, that basically put you behind, mask you, and will allow you to get real data, transparent data, will keep your anonymity anonymously. And basically, this is the only way today to collect right and sorry, accurate real data on time and in scale. Yeah, that's the that is the key element. And this is more important than that. So so let's cut this in parts because I wanna I wanna explain for my audience that this is actually very important, especially in a time where data is the new oil. But at the same time, like you said, any company right now, there's two challenges. In one end, we have these giants that you mentioned in the beginning that are getting all our data for free. Uh, of course, they give us a lot of great things. Like we are here on YouTube and or even in all the podcast distribution. I think this podcast is distributed in around 30 different platforms. And of course, this is great because we have a great reach. But of course, there's a price we pay with this. So if I'm looking at the data from a perspective of a, a big giant like the open ai they are picking my data they can actually pick this and then put an ai algorithm that will be checking the data and take part of my excerpts and you get intelligence and learn with that that's language large language models but like you said in the internet there's still a lot of work to drive traffic to a website to pick the data for 
business development and a lot of different things. So one of the first question I have is bear in mind that you work with a lot of large amounts of data as well. How do you deal with the, the settings of, of, especially the settings of ownership of data, all the, the GDPR solutions, because it's getting increasingly more difficult. And as well, you touch, of course, you, you are an expert as well in cybersecurity and you have a lot of the things in the security. So if you can touch about the a roadmap around these three areas, it's quite important, I think, to share with the audience. Sure. So let's start from uh, the fact that our company and most of the companies, we are enabling data collection or collecting data only for publicly available data. Anything that is behind login is not uh, is not in our space and publicly available data as it, as as it sounds it's publicly available data meaning when you Dennis and me let's for example we will uh, 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 open uh, uh, we, we we will establish a website of news and everyone can hit our website and we will not put credentials or login because we want traffic if we would put credentials and login we will lose traffic so it become publicly available. Anyone can come in and imagine yourself that I let, let, let's 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 give a metaphor that I can sit in front of your of front of this website and write some topics that are interesting right in my notebook, and then I can go to my school or I'm a teacher and tell, tell them, okay, I read today this this and this. Basically, I scrape the data, I collect data, I just manually, but this is is exactly what I did. So publicly available data is legal. You can collect this data and you can scrape the or, or extract this data and nothing more than this. Anything that behind login is a different game. This is the first thing. Second, regarding privacy. So the IP proxy network, which is the first layer in the stake of data collection, and I will touch it in a, in a few minutes, our, in our journey in this state, we are blind to the data. We are just enabling the HTTP traffic, meaning we don't have any privacy regulation because we see nothing, even not the domains of our customers. If you are my customer, I cannot see even, not the domain, sorry. I can, if, if you are going, for example, to a search engine and you are clicking and in the you are clicking a, a, a something in the search line, I cannot see it. Even if I want to see it, I cannot see it. So I'm totally blind for this uh, in privacy uh, in topics or private topics. So that's why here we don't have to uh, uh, meet GDPR uh, regulation. When you are going to the next stage, and a lot of companies are there, yeah? The Zoom infos of the world and others and you are collecting the data by yourself, you are extracting the data and collecting the data, but again, anything is from publicly available data. But here, you need to meet the GDPR regulation. And it's, I'm not saying that it's easy, but you need to meet the standard. For example, you need to let, no, you need to let you, Dennis, know that I have some information about you, that I collected it, from your uh, high school website, which is not after login. And there it's reading that you, Dennis, I don't know, learned in uh, between the years, this and this, and were the best uh, basketball player in, the, in, 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 your, in your class. So it's public, it's there, anyone can see it. So anyway, it's not a private information, but still, if I'm holding it, so I need to acknowledge you, if I have a way to communicate with you, that I can you listen, Dennis, I have this information, if you have some issues with this, let me know and I will delete it. So the GDPR basically is, 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 is something that I think most of the companies uh, that are in this space, uh, according to this uh, regula uh, working according to these regulations, meeting the standards and uh, trying to, uh, 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 and of course, try not to make any foul. Your third topic that you raised, correct me if I'm wrong, but you discussed about the AI challenges or something like this? Yeah, so how, how this data right now, because as we gather amounts of data like this, in one end it's getting, like you said, for a specific client and following up the process of, of data uh, privacy and regulation. And the other thing is how this data can be used for large language models 
uh, especially generative AI, because it becomes more and more important. Okay. So, okay. AI, most of the AI products were nothing without data. All their business model or, or not technology is based on data. First of all, they need to train their model on data and scale all the time. You need, you know, a model of AI needs to be trained. Otherwise, it's not, it's, it doesn't have the intelligence. And then it needs to stay up to date all the time. So basically, AI products, besides of the algorithm that knows how to analyze data, it needs to collect data on a permanent basis and it to be up to date again in order to train his model and in order to stay up to date for his clients. This is exactly the place. This is why we see a growth, a, a, even a, a, even exponential growth in the demand for our products from this data insights that are basically AI companies that using us as their data enabler. They are not expert in data collection. In order to collect data in scale, you need to build a network. We have a network that we built over the years of thousands of servers around the world with full global coverage, with millions of exit points. And in order to collect data and not to be blocked or to be misleaded, they are using us as the data enabler. By the way, you know, there are starting to, to be some articles about this. And if we want to project the future, we think that it's going to be a, a, a kind of, a, I'm not say a fight, but maybe a fight even between the AI products and the websites. Because basically, when you are asking your AI product that you are using a, a question, an information, informative, informative, informative question, what was in the US in 1960? How do I do a, a, a how do I do KPIs for my business for retention? In any other space, you are getting the answer. Ex you, you, you know, you are getting the answer on this AI product. Before this AI product, you will need to go to the search engine and to hit the website. And you are hitting the website, here's traffic. All the business model of websites are based on traffic because they have advertisers. They are more, they, they need to monetize their, their website in order to, to, to make money. So now these AI products are basically skipping the websites. So website, websites will try to prevent AI products to come in to collect data. They cannot do it from legal perspective because it's legal. It's publicly available data. Anyone can come in. It makes the world a better place. The internet is making the world a better place because someone from China and someone from the US and someone from Israel can go in, can educate himself, can stay up to date in front of his laptop or his computer and you, you cannot block him. You can try, but you cannot block him from legal perspective. So it's going to be a technology fight between the AI products and the websites and here by the way, it's increased the value of us for these AI products as data enablers. They will not, they cannot do it because they are, it's not their expertise. It's our expertise. We are one of the leaders in this space and we see the demand. Besides of this, we as a company, as I mentioned initially, we started in the IP proxy network, as I mentioned, it's the way to come into the website. Next stage in the data stake, in the, in, in, in the data uh, industry stake, is the scrapers, collectors, meaning you're coming in, and now you need to start and collect the data by, by, by a product. So we are now getting into this stage. We developed some of great products here, and our biggest next product will be AI scraper. I can elaborate if you want. And then, our next stage, basically it's planned to 2025, is to close the circle and to provide also data insights by using technology and of course AI technology. For this, we established a special committee with industry experts to explore what is a, 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 the focus that we want to be in this data insights vertical. So we will be in the data insights as a provider of data, but as a data enabler for other AI tools 
that that basically needs us. Yeah. So so can you elaborate? You, you launched in in February this year, two thousand twenty four, the AI data collector, which is precisely the scrapper. Uh, so can you? Uh, I know that is an important milestone on the yeah, yeah. Nuts roadmap. So explain how it works, and you touched a bit on this, but to go a bit deeper, and I think this is quite important, and I have some questions related with this. What is data collector or data scraper? Basically, it's a product that you are uh, instructing, go to this website, I want to see, to get this and these parameters, and basically make it from unstructured data to structured data in a JSON file, that then it can go directly to my automation and uh, other products that can analyze it, in CSV, in Excel, whatever. Now, this, this, this product, the scraper, it needs to learn the structure of the website because according to this structure, it can go and collect the, it, 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 can, it can get in and, and start to collect the data. Now imagine yourself that there are millions of websites and millions of structures and Till today, the competition is basically using professional services, meaning human hours that are educating the product. This is the structure of this website. And now you can start and collect automatically. Second, even after you educate your product, the website is revising itself, changing the structure of the website, changing the structure of the landing page. Then you need to hold and to re-educate your product. We are developing a product with AI algorithms inside that will learn by himself the structure, will learn by himself even when a page or a website is changing its structure. And then we don't, we need almost zero human hours, almost zero professional service. One of our uh, 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 goals is to me, auto, fully automated in everything, in sales and marketing, and of course in our products. And by this, we can provide a very fast response to our customers. We can be agile as a generic, as a generic scraper for every website. And we can be also very fast response when a website is changing its structure because our AI <clears throat> algorithm will learn it by himself and very fast will recover and will, will keep uh, uh, will not stop the business, will, will not have any issues with business continuity of our customers. I'm sure that a company like yours, at the moment you are in a golden moment that anything that touches data and AI can grow very scale and very strong. So just tell us, a, so what, what's your journey right now towards the present stage? And like you mentioned, you are in a strong situation right now. I've been checking your stock that you've been growing for the last one year. Congratulations on that. Uh, so it's been a, a good cycle of growth. So how do you want to take this web scraper and for instance relate? Because a lot of companies right now are working large language models. But uh, one of the things that I think is more important is medium sized models and creating generative models around that. How do you see that part, first of all, and that integration and the potential areas that you want? Of course, whatever you can announce publicly. I know that if as a public company, you have to yeah, be careful yeah, about yeah, it, yeah. you mentioned, but just probably from a top level and then we can. Yeah, yeah. We, I have some limitations, but I can talk in high level about, about, about our journey. So I think, and, 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 you know, by the way, one of the most important as a CEO, one of the more, most important things is, is that you need to be agile. Yes. And you need to adapt yourself and not to stick to a plan that you planned one year ago because this is the plan. No, you need to be agile. You need to re reinvestigate all the time. We check all the time your plans. So everything is according to today and not only today, but, but, but to, to this period. And what we see in this period and what our, as our future is that we have hundreds of satisfied customers in the IP proxy network product that we are providing. And we have a demand from our customers that are telling to us, we are so satisfied from your IP proxy network. Why not? Uh, we want to use you as one vendor for all of the stake, not only the IP proxy network. Provide me also the scraper, the collector, the data sets, and then the data insights. So we have already the, the awareness, we have the customers, we have the knowledge, and this is our journey now. 
we in 2023 met our goals, released our first scraper. In 2024, we released our very major product, which is called Web and Blocker, which it's, it's the enabler of these scrapers and IP proxy network. We will release by the end of the year our AI scraper, and then we will have the IP proxy network and the scraping and collecting capabilities to upsell and cross-sell our customers and, of course, to bring more and more new customers. The next big thing of our company, and I think it's going to, it's, it's a huge thing for our company, is to close the loop and to investigate well. And that's exactly what we are doing in these days. We established a real committee that we are meeting twice in a week. We have homework. We are educating ourselves. We are learning everything. Everybody's talking about AI, but the AI is just starting. And we, we need to investigate well what is the space of data insights that we want to come in? It, it can be huge. It, it's huge. You can provide insights in almost each and every space. You know, today we are agnostic. Our customers are coming from all over e-commerce and cybersecurity companies and pricing intelligence companies and AI companies because our product is agnostic for data collection. But when you are diving into the data insights, you cannot be agnostic anymore. You need to uh, uh, to find the place that you will be specialized, and then you will be industry focus, e-commerce, uh, pricing, retail, cyber, uh, governments, so many options on the table. We brought really experts from this space. Some of them are from venture capitals, for example, and we're about to find the best uh, and direction for us, it can be by internal development, it can be by an acquisition, it can be by a combination. And of course, from you mentioned regarding the performance of the company and according to this, the performance of the share of the company. So we are performing in the next, in the last two years very well. You can go to our, you know, we are public companies, so we have financials that are public, we have present corporate presentation, you can see the growth from revenues perspective, uh, great gross margins, we are profitable, we have positive and great EBITDA, we are generating cash, we have net profit, and we want to keep it, to keep this growth because we see a huge demand to invest some of our profits in the company or most of them in the company in order to accelerate growth, in order to improve our product, to extend our network and, of course, to stay innovative. You know, it's all about innovation. AI scraper, data insights, all about technology and innovation in order to open ourselves to more and more spaces, more and more industries, and to be one of the leading data companies in the world. Oh, fantastic. And that's, a, that's a, a, a very strong and I think special the continuous innovation is the key element on this. So. You, one of the things I was looking at uh, some of your PRs and different parts that you have is that you have a lot of verticals. You mentioned retail, but you have a lot of fintech and a lot of other companies. So I want to, it's a broader question, but I think it's particularly important for your knowledge as well in terms of the internet. So as we go, I think at the moment we have a very broken internet because in one end we have, of course, the web two, the web three, and there's of course all the AI and spatial computing integrating. So that means a lot of the data that we're scraping and that companies like yours are scraping the internet are becoming more and more important. But it's the qualification of this data that is the most important thing right now. So from your experience working with different clients, and of course you have from fintech clients to retail, e-commerce and different parts, what would be the, the advice and your vision uh, as this kind of variation of the internet and as well, especially the directions we're going? Because of course, I think companies like yours are cutting edge in the sense that you are a step ahead, but at the same time, you learn with, like you said, with the mistakes, but as well with the experience working with clients and as well understanding, for instance, I, I was talking with a big corporation and they said something that made a lot of sense for me, but I never thought it that, that way. We, we, sometimes if we are in digital or in tech, like you and me, we think, okay, everything is very fast, very fast. But in the other day, most of the companies, they change computers each three years, sometimes even more. And if it's data centers, sometimes it's for five, 10 years. And then they said one thing that made me crazy 
I didn't thought about it is that if it's a, a, a for instance, a manufacturing company or a big industrial company, sometimes it's each ten years. So this is there's all these legacy systems and there's all the things like us that we are every month we have to keep updating. So how do you see this kind of looking at the legacy? and looking at the innovation and the acceleration and the disruption coming, especially from AI and special computing, especially anything related with uh, things like the the Apple Vision Pro uh, that is creating new levels of data and new levels of interactive data. It's a big question, but I want wow. your... <laughs> wow. Your question, by the way, I, 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 I will answer in very high level. You know, you mentioned the, the world, the tech world is progressing like crazy every day. A lot of changes, and 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 of course, you know the the big players of the world. Every change they are doing is has a mean impact on, on thousands of companies and and applications and vendors and providers, etc. And not only them, but you know the regulation and the and and, and, and you know and and, and it, it's a world of integration. You are not doing you are doing almost nothing by yourself. As we mentioned, you have AI, you need data, you need data, you need other, other websites, you need cybersecurity products to protect you. So it's a world of cooperation and integration, but it's a competitive world and everybody wants to take bigger piece and to, to stop you in order that they can do more money, more revenues, etc., etc. My recommendation for me and for other companies is try and be focused on your expertise and anything else, even if you think, even if you think that it's a small issue, don't do it internally. Use third, use third party products. I'm doing it also in my company. Use the experts. Don't try to protect your entity. Use cybersecurity companies. Don't try to collect data by yourself. Use data companies. Don't try to do many other things by yourself because first of all, it's defocused. And second, you will never be in the same level of these companies because I am, as the CEO of a data company, I am waking up every morning, getting articles about data, staying up to date about the regulation, trying to be innovative, learn what will be, trying to project what will be their next developments, what is going to be in the internet, etc. You will never be in the same level because you are CEO of a semiconductors company or a cybersecurity company or many, many, many other spaces. So the world is become very complex. Even if sometimes, you know, some co my colleagues sometimes think that they can, you know, they can save money because I don't need to take this third party vendor and do it internally. Have a great engineer, he knows how to do it. No, no, he doesn't know how to do it. it, it, it you, you will lose money for this. So try to build a business plan and to allocate budgets for this in order not, not to be surprised and then go in your expertise and use third party experts, products, companies that it's their expertise, appreciate it, appreciate it and know how to value it because you will never be in their level. Not because, you know, sometimes it's an ego issues. I'm smart enough. No, no, you are smart enough. Maybe you are smarter than them but you have only 24 hours a day and that's your expertise and stick to this expertise and stay focused. I like that. And the focus and, and as well build this part of the ecosystem can save a lot of headaches, especially if you build a good ecosystem. So one, one of the last questions I want is, is I, one of the things I like a lot in your market overview, you have a section for data collection. And I think this is a great one. So when I look at data collection, you, you have in your document four market drivers data backed decisions of course the critical for ai and we touched that the social media which of course the monitoring and understanding of social media it becomes more <laughs> and then the buyer trends so on these four areas i think i would say that of course right now critical for ai it's it's probably the most at least trendy because there's billions and billions integrated into AI and the numbers that keep growing and then there's the buyer trends and i think one of the things that uh, i always like to do is okay for instance, in the case of data collection, the numbers we're talking about just late data collection and labeling, according to your own research, is around 17.1 billion. And there's a lot of work on that area that needs a lot. So tell us a bit about this part of the data collection, especially from these different market drivers. Social media, 
you know, internet, you, you can differentiate. There is the internet and there is the social media. It can be a second internet because it's an ocean of data. You can learn almost everything from the social media, almost everything, not only from the big social media platforms. You know, you have the boutique platforms, you have social media for capital markets, social media for gaming, uh, you know, like the Discord and others. You have the stock tweets and, and, and the Reddit, and by the way, Reddit went public yesterday. The Reddit and, and the Robinhood for the capital markets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So social media is an ocean of data that you as a business owner can learn almost everything from these platforms. First of all, let's start a very, very simple topic. You want to hire an employee. Imagine yourself that you or me, maybe the young girl for sure, if I will have your data from all the social media platforms. Let's start again. It's not publicly available data. It's a different game. It's publicly, but it's after login. So it's a different game, but just, just, just as a concept, if I will know what are your area of interest, what are, who are your friends, where are you spending your time from the LinkedIn, LinkedIn, I can see uh, your background from the Instagram, I can see this from the Twitter, I can see maybe your political directions, etc., etc. So if I can get a summarized document about you from all social media, I think it will make the hiring process to be with a higher probability to be a successful and I will not be surprised one day after you come to work and I will find out that you are this, this and this. But let's take it to other trends. Everybody is talking today in this country about this flavor. So if if I am a, 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 a food company, so I know that everybody now in London are talking about this food. So okay, so I will I will I, I will uh, uh, release for this market uh, uh, something in the taste of this food. It's it's connected also to bar trends. So think from political and geopolitical, you can learn a lot about the trend and if something is going on with the citizens of this of this uh, of this country. If you are uh, if you want to run, uh, uh, of course, in the you know in the political world, the social media, you remember what happened in the U.S. elections uh, a few years ago. So all of this is around data. Social media, yes, platforms are huge drivers for data needs because everything is there and data big decisions by the way some of this is based on social media and the competition etc and the ai is all, is everything it needs sometimes from the social media sometimes from other websites but all of these uh, 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 trends are taking this market to its exponential growth of in cagr of almost 30 percent in the next uh, five or six years to reach 17 billion dollar it can be 18 in other research 19 but but it's huge numbers if you ask me i think it would be higher yeah and that's i agree completely it's going to be higher and as well the challenge right now is that we put the, this part of social media with ai and all the things together and as well our companies can use this in a way that is useful because it's increasingly more difficult to touch data from social media unless you pay big amounts especially to meta or to twitter or x right now and a lot of the others Okay, well, it's been a pleasure. I, like you said, that especially on the AI, I might want to do a second podcast with you on the AI and data. I think there's a couple of things. So one last question, and I will ask the team to put the graphic, but I would like to touch one. I like a lot the way you put this graphic on, on your own kind of report. In the data collection landscape on page seven, you have the data collections landscape and you have the IPPN solutions, the data collections and labeling, data sets and data insights. And then you have your products and the current solutions and future growth solutions. I don't know if you can elaborate a bit on that. RPPN is basically you are knocking on the door of the website and the website will open the door and you will see the real and transparent data in this room. You came in. This is one product. It's called IPPN. Now you need to start and collect stuff, but you need to do it very fast in automatic way and you need to have only a few parameters. You don't want everything from, from the stuff. Imagine that it's a storage. So the collector or the scraper will do it automatically. 
will go only to Nike shoes and then and, and Adidas shoes and the, this is the size, this is the version, this is the price and you will get it in a structured data. It can be CSV file or it can be JSON file because you need to file it for your analyzer or, or data insights product. Then it's data sets, meaning if I'm already, I, I have the capabilities to extract data. So I will extract the data, I will pack it, and I will send it to you as a ready to, as a data set. You will ask, I want this and this and this. Okay, get it. And then I can send it again and again. By the way, it, it can be a very profitable product because it's the same data that I will say to Dennis, I can send to someone else because he needs the same data. Again, all is publicly available data. Next step is, I think I discussed a lot about it, is you came into the room, you collect the data, but now you need to have conclusions. Okay, I want, <clears throat> wait, now I want, okay, I have the data, but now let's, let's go for the, the pricing world. I want to price my product in my online store. So I collect the data from all the online stores around. I know all the prices every second. But then I need an engine, an AI engine that will optimize the price because I don't want to sell in the lowest price, okay? It's not a smart way to manage the business. You need to sell in the optimum price. So this data insights product is also, we, we <clears throat> will also analyze and then basically and we are closing the circle. You get into the room, you collect the relevant data, you analyze it and you provide insights for the customers. And this is our journey. This is the place that we want to be. And this is the place that we will be. Fantastic. Well, that, like uh, like we discussed, there's a lot of things here that I still want to touch more on the AI side, but we'll probably, I definitely want to do a second podcast. So I want to thank you for this. For people listening to us, of course, the you are a public company, so there's a role of regulatory parts, but we'll put all the information about the company, about the stock, about the links to the websites and the different information. Any last things you want to touch with the audience, advice about how to deal with data nowadays? And we touch a lot of important things, but I think it's always important. And as well about your company where they can find information about it. The most important thing, I mentioned it a few times, but remember, everybody needs to remember, the internet is not the physical world. It doesn't have to be the real let's say the real product, the real price, because it's, it's, it's technology. I can adapt and change the uh, image that Shaha will see and the image that Dennis will see because I know who you are. You, I have your IP address. I know where you're coming from. So if you want to get a reliable and transparent and accurate data, not as a personal, okay? I'm talking more as a, as a business. Of course. You cannot trust like the conclusion that we said before. Don't trust your own domain. Don't trust your own product. Use not not us. Okay. I'm not just advertising my company. Use experts in data collection because the data, the damage from collecting non-accurate data or being blocked can be huge. And sometimes ruin your business or take your decisions to a place that you don't want to be and focus on your business and take the right decisions, learn about your competition, learn about everything all the time. Use data without data. You lose nothing. Every decision that you will take in our world today, because it's so dynamic without a accurate on time and transparent data might make you a damage of billions. So invest few thousands in order to prevent yourself from doing a damage of millions or sometimes can basically kill your business. That's my advice. Very good advice. It's been a pleasure, Sashar. I wish you congratulations and that your stock keeps growing faster. And as well, that a lot of products keep coming and a lot of innovation because that's what we need and we need more than ever. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you very much. It was a great discussion. Appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure.